Hey everyone, this is going to be a quick unboxing of the Red Cat Sandstorm. I picked this up from Hobby Time in Gaines, Gainesville, Georgia. That is Hobby Time and not Hobby Town. I picked it up tonight for early Christmas gift for myself. They run about 150, 160, um, about 170, I think it was up there when I got it. So um, this seems to be one of the newer models because it does seem to come with a wing on the back where some of the other ones didn't. The model number is 94201. Um, and they do have this disclaimer right here. Um, I know that several people have gotten these and I saw a couple of reviews on them where the speed controller inside of it, you cannot use a 2S LiPo. Um, I've heard that the speed controllers do burn up when you use a 2S LiPo. So it tells you a 7.2 volt, 1800 to 3600 milliamp uh, nickel metal battery only, which is pretty interesting. Um, most things do come with a speed control that can at least run a 2S LiPo. But anyway, let's go ahead and take this off. Instead of doing all the unpacking and everything, I went ahead and skipped that because there's very few things that come in the box with this. Um, it comes with this sheet that's got basic instruction manual in with it. And then it's just got very few tools in it um it actually doesn't have any tools to work on the car with but it does come with the binding plug if you wanted to get another receiver or bind the radio to another receiver um shock spacers and what looks to be four screws in there i don't know what those four screws are used for but um wasn't expecting too much from this for the price that i paid but uh other things that come in the box this wall charger um, I think this is probably about a one or two amp charger. Looks to be two amps. They might have upped it up some. So um won't be using this either. I'll probably use it for the first initial stock run. But And as far as the radio, it is a 2.4 gigahertz, which is good. But it does use eight double A's, um, which I guess would be okay. I mean, most radios now do use four, but... It does come with some of the standard adjustments on there, which is pretty good, especially, like I said, for the price that you pay for this. Um does have some steering and throttle trims on there and uh, several reversing as well, if you can see that at the very top. Uh, what interested me about this buggy was, one, was the look of it. Um, it actually looks pretty good. Um, this is probably one of the ones that I thought had a pretty unique look to it. Um, as far as the setup out the box, the tires do have a pretty hard compound. Uh, let me actually set this up on here to get some adjustability with it. Uh, tires do have a pretty hard compound, so they will last a good minute. Um, I don't know how they'll do on a soft pack dirt track um, to get good grip with those, but it is four wheel drive, so it should help out somewhat. Um, it does have this fake looking tire in the back that is complete plastic. It almost feels like a Lexan body, a little bit tougher than that, but that kind of takes away from the look at it, but I may put an actual real tire back there. This is the wing that they started adding to these kits. Normally it would come without the wing looking like that, but it started adding this wing onto there, which actually is a nice unique touch to it i hope for if they release another version of this or updated version they will replace this with an actual tire up the price of five dollars i'm pretty sure people won't mind paying for it um other features is i went ahead and took the body pins off to get to the electronics it's just four body pins there's two here and then there's one right here and then there's one on the other side over here and once you take those off you can kind of push this out it's kind of hard to do this with one hand and flip this completely up sorry about that it was kind of hard for me to do all that with one hand but it's just two body clips in the front two in the rear the front two take off the hood and then the rear two allow you to actually pop this up and ta-da here is the inside of the car um, this makes it pretty easy to get to the electronics inside, but also kind of keep that 
somewhat roll cage look to it, which I thought was pretty interesting and unique as well. Um, you may have a hard time finding bodies that may fit it, but um, you could probably get some longer rear body posts, take this front part off and actually put like a truck body on there. I may do that a little bit later on because um, I did see some other bodies that may fit this. Um, as far as the kit itself, it does come with the battery. Like I said, that's pretty good that you pay that amount for this. It's probably, yep, 1800 milliamp, uh, which is fine to get it running out the box. I'll probably do a box stock running first before I actually add a mild brushless system to it. Um, this is a six cell nickel metal battery. Um, as far as everything else with the car, it does come with a heat sink on the motor, which is also pretty unique because most cars don't come with this. So I could actually use this on other vehicles as well. And it does seem to be that this is a 550 size, uh, 540 size or 550 size can uh, motor, probably just your basic uh, 540 or 550 motor, but we'll see how that runs. Um, I know Traxxas includes something in their car, but it is a 12 turn. I doubt seriously that this is a 12 turn. Um, but it does look to be a larger can than the normal 540 size. The speed controller, I was told this might have been the updated one that was waterproof, but the instructions didn't state it. So I doubt seriously that it is, and I don't want to test that. So this is a quick unboxing review of the Red Cat Sandstorm. Probably get it up and running within a couple of days and put some videos up and some thoughts on it. And then also put a video up of it running brushless. So stay tuned.